Welcome to our presentation. This is Chen. This is Xin. We are from University of Maryland. As the conference is virtual, we are going to talk to each other. Instead of doing a monologue presentation, we will be asking and answering questions to each other. The plot will cover the background, replay the ideation process, then describe paper details. Question answering is a common natural language processing application. One flavor of QA is factual question answering, where machines answer questions containing precise facts about entities. For example, if a human asks who was the last person to live in the forbidden city, a machine realizes that the question is talking about a resident of the forbidden city, then reasons to determine who its last resident was, and gives the answer, Pu Yi, about a decade ago, IBM Watson beats human in this factoid question answering competition, Jeopardy, using a combination of raw text and knowledge graph. But despite all the hype, Watson still got the final Jeopardy question wrong. Its largest airport is named for a World War II hero, its second largest for a World War II battle in the category of U.S. cities. Watson answered Toronto instead of the correct answer, Chicago. People analyzed that it may be due to three reasons. First, Watson was giving a downgraded weight to the evidence of the question category. Second, there were ambiguity between entities of the same name. And third, Watson was unable to locate the evidence for some part of the question. But that was 2010, ancient history. How do QA systems nowadays work? Haha, <laughs> today factor QA can be split into two general approaches. The first is knowledge graph based question answering. Find an entity in knowledge graphs like Freebase or DBpedia. It can answer complex questions, but only if the knowledge graph has the information. Who was the last emperor of China? was great and Pu Yi is found in the KG. However, existing knowledge graphs are brittle and incomplete. They have tons of entities, but the relations are very sparse, and getting more relation data is expensive. For example, Google's knowledge bot has 570 million entities, 14 times more than Freebase, but only has 35k relation types. This is similar to Freebase. While you can get the birthday and title of Pu Yi, you are not going to find more complex relations. I see. It's this kind of unexpected information or language that can break knowledge graph question answering approaches. Despite that, you might find this language in books, newspapers, or other free text. This all comes from the machine reading explosion started by Squat. These models extract a span from paragraphs as the answer to the question. It's more robust a solution for arbitrary questions. Okay, machine reading may be more popular, but there are still problems. These benchmark datasets find the answer from a single piece of evidence. In this work, we study answering complex questions instead. In realistic factor QA problems, like answering Jeopardy or quiz ball questions, multiple pieces of evidence need to be combined to point to the correct answer. Here's an example from the QB-Link dataset, where questions come from the quiz ball computation. There are other common relations such as printing a series of cityscapes of in the question. Would it be possible to mix both of the previous methods of advantages? to be able to answer questions by combining multiple evidences. Funny you should ask. We would need free text for, for a more diverse set of evidence and to go along with it. We would need a way to reason over these relationships. How about constructing a knowledge graph from scratch, say from the free text, so we could do structural reasoning on it? Sounds good. Let's take the same example to check our understanding. Vermeer painted a series of cityscapes of this Dutch city, including the little streets. 
This city highly influenced the Dutch Golden Age in various aspects. Where does free tax come from? Here, the question has two sentences. The first sentence tells the evidence that Vermeer painted a picture called The Little Street about this entity, which is a Dutch city. The second sentence is that this Dutch city highly influenced the Dutch Golden Age. There are many entities mentioned, Vermeer, The Little Street, The Dutch Golden Age. Besides, there are even more information behind these entities. The assumption is that this evidence sentence is extracted from large-scale text collections like Wikipedia would include the question entity. Some of them contain the uncommon relations men mentioned in the question, and also mentions the an answer entity. In this example, the answer is Delft. That's right. So for this example, ideally we want to extract one of the evidence sentences like the little street is one of the three paintings of the view of Delft from the question entity, the little street. Now given the free text, how does our system look like? Our system has three components. We start with constructing free text knowledge graph from Wikipedia. Then we find the question related subgraph from this knowledge graph. Finally, a graph new network model reasons over the graph and rank the candidate entity node to find the answer. For graph construction, we construct the knowledge graph similar to the traditional ones. The nodes are entities, like the wiki page titles in Wikipedia. How about the edges? Let's see, the edges are free text that connect to nodes. We define the edges as sentences where pairs of entities co-occur. Okay. If there is a sentence that mentions both entity A and B, then this sentence becomes an edge in our knowledge graph between node and entity A and B. So, is it possible that there are multiple sentences as the edges between two nodes? Yes, this allows two entity nodes to contain different relations. Because of this, the knowledge graph that we build could have a very broad coverage. How do we select what entities should be there in this knowledge graph? Let's say, if we build a knowledge graph from the entire Wikipedia corpus, it would be noisy, as not all relations are what we are interested in. It would be, so we would need some mechanism to trim the knowledge graph in some way. The basis would be based on the question, so we build local knowledge graph centered around the question. Only nodes and edges important to the question would be there. In other words, a question-related subgraph. Okay, a local knowledge graph centered around the question. I think entities from the question must be there as nodes. In this example, the question mentions Vermeer, the Little Street, and Dutch Golden Age. Those nodes would be there. Another part are candidate answer entities. This should be in the graph, and they should be directly connect to the question entities. We may find them in two sources. We first extract all entities in question entities Wikipedia page as the candidate entity nodes. Then we augment the candidate entity nodes by adding all entities in top retrieved Wikipedia pages by the search engine. Here in the figure, the entity Delft and Amsterdam are candidate entity nodes. Further, we use the node gloss, the first sentence in its Wikipedia page, as node features to describe the nodes. Also, we need edges in the local knowledge graph. These are the evidence signals to find the correct answer. In this example, the edge between the node, the little street, and Delft are the edge between the node, Dutch Golden Edge, and the Delft are two evidence mentioned in the question. We extract the evidence edge directly from our free text knowledge graph. What if the question related subgraph is still too big? If the subgraph is too big, it slows both training and inference. That's really a concern. We therefore prone the graph with a simple filter to remove weak, spurious nodes and improve the efficiency. For node filters, 
we fine-tune both models to score each candidate node's evidence sentence by concatenating the question, age sentence, and node growth. We choose the highest sentence score as a node score, and the top k score nodes are kept. For age sentence filtering, since there's no direct supervision signal, we calculate TFIDF scores between questions and age sentence and select the top k score sentences as the age features. I think we now have a good setup for the question-related subgraph. It has three components. Question entity nodes as one part on the left side of the figure, candidate entity nodes on the right side of the figure, and a set of filtered evidence edges that connect question entity nodes and candidate entity nodes. With the question-related subgraph, how do we find the correct answer entity on the subgraph? Let me think about what makes the answer entity eligible. The correct answer entity would be closely tied to the question entity nodes. As we can see from the figure, the correct candidate entity node delft connects to all three question entity nodes, while the incorrect candidate entity node Amsterdam only connects to one question node. Therefore, a correct answer node should aggregate information from multiple question entity nodes. Right. The correct answer node should be more connected to question entity nodes. So the first criteria for a correct answer node is graph connectivity. What else? A correct entity node would connect to question entities with an age sentence that is close to the question sentence. For example, in the figure, the question entity node, the little street, connects to both candidate entity nodes Delft and Amsterdam but the edge with the sentence, the little street is one of the only three paintings of view of depth, is more similar to the question than the little street is exhibited in Amsterdam. So the model needs to prioritize evidence edges that are similar to the question. Okay, the second criteria is edge relevance. Evidence edges with sentences that are similar to the question are likely to be more helpful. Since you mentioned this mistake by washing earlier, it reminds me that we need to have the entity type right. The answer entity should be in the right type as promoted in the question. We use node growth as node features to indicate the entity type. For example, the growth, the growth of Delft says Delft is a city in the province of South Holland, Netherlands, which aligns the, what the question asks, the Dutch city. True, so the third criteria is node information. We therefore propose a novel graph neural network model to find the correct answer node from the candidate entity nodes in the graph. We would use a graph neural network model. A key component is that multiple layers refine the representation of candidate entity nodes, and we finally rank the candidate entity nodes based on the last layer's representation. We start with the first layer's initial representation, then the graph update, and finally the answer scoring. The initial representation includes the question representation, node representation, and age representation. Given a sequence of question tokens, we first embed the token into word embeddings. The embedding layer could either be pre-trained fixed embeddings like growth, or contextualized embeddings like bird output. Then, a recurrent neural network layer followed by the self-attention layer produces a contextualized representation of the question. For node representation, we follow the same scheme for node growth and sum the growth representation and the question representation as a node representation. The age representation is slightly different. We first adopt the similar scheme to get each age sentence representation. Then the age representation is average of the k sentences. Now we have the initial representation. How does the model pass the representation to the candidate entity nodes? This comes to the graph update component. At each successive layer, the graph update starts with the representation forwarding, which updates the question, age, and question node representation through feed forward neural network layer. Then, we score each evidence age. The higher the age scores indicate the age is more helpful to answer the question. 
we compute the age score through a sigmoid layer of the dot product between the question representation and age representation. Next, we pass the information from the question entity node combined with the evidence age to the candidate entity node. As shown in the figure, the information passing from question entity node Q1 to candidate entity node A1 first combines Q1 and each age E11's representation through a feedforward network layer weighted by the age score. Finally, the candidate entity node update combines the previous layer's representation, the question representation, and the past information from all connected ages. At last, the approach uses a multi-layer perception to score the candidate entity node with the last layer's representation, and during the inference, the node with the highest score is the predicted answer. We should give the approach a name, since it's brilliant. Now we talked a lot about Delft. How do you like DELFT Delft as the approach name? It could stand for Deciphering Entity Links from Free Text. Aha! Yeah, by the way, I heard that Delft is very famous for its Delftware, the blue and white portrait. Have you seen a real one? You couldn't tell its difference from Puyi area polling in the Forbidden City. Alright, this is a fun naming game. Okay, to summarize, in this work, we propose a method called Delft, deciphering entity links from free text. Delft constructs a free text entity graph from Wikipedia, where Wikipedia entities are the nodes. Unlike existing knowledge graphs that use predefined relations as ages, here the ages in this free text entity graph are natural language sentences where two entities co-occur. Then, it grounds a question-related subgraph by connecting question entities to candidate entities with text sentences. Finally, a specific design graph neural network layer is proposed to find the answer from the candidate entities. Delft combines the advantages of both approaches. It inheres the advantages of KGQA approach that supports structural reasoning, since it uses free text as knowledge. And recall is not the bottleneck. Delft has as much coverage as a machine reading approach. How would you validate Delft? What are some benchmark datasets that are available? We would evaluate on three datasets with expert author questions, QBLink, Quanta, and Trivia QA. QBLink and Quanta are entity-centric datasets with the um, goal to answer the que entity the question describes. And the question usually includes multiple clues with various difficulties to get the answer. Trivia QA is a benchmark dataset for machine reading and is relatively simple and mentions fewer entities per question. We include here for in our experiments for completeness and focus more on the questions that are answerable by Wikipedia titles. Delft contains two components, the graph construction and graph modeling. How to evaluate the first part, graph construction? We evaluate the graph construction by computing the answer recall of the generated subgraph. Overall, more than 80% of questions are answerable by the subgraph. In comparison, we manually examined 50 random sampled QBLink questions, but only 38% of them are reachable within two hops in the DVpedia graph. So using free text as a knowledge source, our question grounded knowledge graph ensures very high coverage. Also, we compute the statistics of the graph. We can see the graph naturally separates the correct answer. Compared to the incorrect answers, the correct ones are connected by significantly more evidence ages, and also ages have more sentences. Then we are going to compare with other methods on answer accuracy. What are the baseline methods? We compare with different baseline methods. We include open domain re machine reading methods, Dr. QA. We also have some fine tuning BERT method, BERT sentence, and fine tunes BERT on the question entity gross sequence pair. Finally, we compare with BERT memory network, which use the same evidence as Delft, 
but collapse the graph structure by concatenating all evidence sentences into a memory cell. We will come audience to find more details in the paper. Do we have some visualization to show the depth model behavior? Yes, this figure shows the example with model output. Note that both candidate entity nodes, Rona Reagan and Jerry Brown, once become the governor of California, so the ages from question node, governor of California, are not distinguishable between these candidates. However, the age from bedtime for Bensom is more informative and Delft student gives high score on this age. By aggregating multiple ages, Delft student finally selects the correct answer, while the baseline predicts the Jerry Brown as the answer. How are the quantitative results? The figure shows the overall result on three datasets. Delft improves over Dr. QA, the machine reading baseline. These datasets require reasoning over multiple sentences. However, Dr. QA is focused on single sentence and single evidence questions. Delft focuses on matching questions text with different pieces of evidence. Both sentence incorporates the gross information. Even with the help of the strong pre-trained model, it is still too limited to answer very complex questions. Delft combines useful text evidence and con KG connections to answer the question. Finally, it's worth mentioning that compared to BERT memory network, which uses the same evidence as BERT but without structure, Delft's structure reasoning thrives on complex questions in QB-Link and Quanta. On Trivia QA, which has fewer than two edges per candidate entity node, the difference is close as there is not much structure. How does Delft perform with different complexity of questions? Here, in this figure shows, in QB-Link dataset, the accuracy with the number of entities in the question. We can see Delft's relative accuracy increase with more entities in the question. It would be helpful to do some case studies. Yes, we would show some er error analysis here. As mentioned above, Delft is good at answering questions that could directly map to extracted evidence or synthesize multiple pieces of evidence. We leave more details in the paper. In this example, no information question entities would lead to the key evidence sentence, Germany divided into East Germany and West Germany, so Delft cannot get the answer correct. And in this example, Delft cannot make the right prediction, since the wrong candidate shares most of the extracted evidence sentences with the correct answer. To summarize this work, Combining natural language and knowledge-rich graphs is a common problem. Delft inherits knowledge graph question-answering style reasoning with the widely available free text evidence. It builds a high-coverage free text knowledge graph and a novel GNN to find the answer by aggregating multiple pieces of evidence. Future work should explore whether these approaches are also useful for other important tasks like dialogue language modeling, or ad hoc search. The code, knowledge graph, and question-grounded graph can be found online with links in the slides. Thanks all. Thanks.